Hey, what's up, guys? Continuing my uh, little series here, Comics of the Losers. The uh, comics and graphic novels of quality <clears throat> from the other side, from the side of uh, the people that lost. But wait a minute. These are American soldiers. <laughs> well, uh, I did a, a review of Vietnam Journal uh, that my friend Nero got me. Uh, I don't know, this is, uh, it's recommended, you know, right off the bat, but I figured I wanted to put this in the context of what this series I'm trying to do is about, uh, going over some of the stuff briefly. Um, Don Lomax, of course, he actually was in the military, uh, in Vietnam, and probably made the best Vietnam comic ever, okay? uh, A lot of, uh, back in the world, that's a term. Remember Jonathan Bowden used it, back in the world, that meant, that was a military term, that meant you were back, you know, back home, essentially, in America, you know, you were home from these places they were throwing all of you. Uh, and he lists what happened on this day in March 21st, 1967. So now, of course, the main character here is Journal. He is a Korean War vet, so he's an older man uh, who's now a journalist. So he's, he has combat experience, but he's along for the ride. And like I said, art composition is great. Yeah. Uh, this particular one here, of course, it's it shows the I would say the tragedy, okay, of uh, what these guys had to go through. These mostly working class and you know, uh, guys who were uh, professional military men as usual. Uh, in this impossible political situation, this. Uh, Proxy war with the Soviets, the civil war, this managerial war, uh, which ends up with, uh, you know, Vietnamese civilians being caught in a crossfire, you know. Uh, one guy panics, and now they're afraid to come forward. So now they're in the middle of the NVA, the guerrillas shooting at them, and Americans shooting at them. The guy's trying to, right, you know, they want to rescue them, okay. And <laughs> the confusion... Yeah, of it where uh, they talk to the people here and they realize, oh my God, there's more, there's more of their village being held. You know, and they just ordered a bomb strike. You know, so he, he's gonna try to abort it, uh, but you know, you know, communications. It's too late. America. <laughs> so now the little baby girl he saved is an orphan, and this little scene here is very uh, touching. You know. When she starts to cry, you know, and she's putting her hand out because she liked this man that saved her, you know. Ah, uh, like there's the APCs. Anyway. Uh, and, uh, look at this. A thousand year old. You may be a thousand years old, Lord Buddha, uh, but you better get with the program. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, uh, the dialogue here is really good. This is what Garth Ennis wished he could do, okay. Uh, it doesn't sound like two guys in a in a pub uh, having cigarettes and drinking. Uh, it's just like real deal things. Talking about, yeah, we don't use bayonets. We use entrenching tools and hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's talking to this guy. And this guy is a typical, he's a professional soldier. Right? He's not some guy that got drafted, you know. He even realizes that, you know, the war that, that they're in is retarded. Thousands of years of tradition. Why it's so damn arrogant for us to try to force these people to live their lives on our terms. Right? You know, we call this a backward country. I wonder how far we would have come if we had been at war for 4,000 years like they've been with the Chinese. You know, you know they're sweet, loving people. Just want to live their lives, raise their babies, and grow some rice. Just like, you know, a lot of these guys. You're a paradox, T. Career soldier with a conscience. Get off it, you know. You see, this is stupid. You know, but I'm a professional soldier. I, you know, this is my job. You know, uh, you can argue that is the modern soldier, the slave soldier. Okay? Uh, but this guy is more honest than most. You know, he's a guy. I'm a human being. You know, 20 years and I'm out. Right? Just like a lot of the cops. They want their pension, chief. Uh, you know, he's gonna move backwards and get away from the phonies and the politicians. Sounds good to me. <laughs> well, you know, you know, this dude's not gonna survive this comic, right? Yeah. So we get into a battle here, and you see how I mean the NVA they were tough sons of bitches. I mean they were good at night infiltrating. Uh, they're fighting for you know their country, so to speak. You know it's a civil war, but it was Vietnam, right? It was 
They're used to fighting invaders. The Chinese, the French, uh, and the Americans. Yeah, and uh, a journal himself has to friggin' oh, beat a guy to death with an entrenching tool. Yeah. So he's got a bad head injury. Uh, it seems like every guy's, every squad he gets assigned to, the dudes all get wiped out. So it's time for him to go back uh, back to the world for a little bit. And like I said, at the end of each issue, had this this thing, the MIA thing. I told you about that. The POWs. Uh, you see less and less of these. I mean, these men are all. But forgotten you know and could they have survived maybe they were executed maybe they died you'll never know they didn't know back then uh, with all the resources of the government that put them there in the first place and now obviously other than the human their families nobody really cares so, all right so we'll go a little quick because I'm trying to make a point here he goes he's wounded he goes back in the field you know back to the thing to the uh, Behind the lines, you get this guy uh, burning to death. Yeah. <laughs> this NBA guy gets crushed by the helicopter. This guy's burning up, begging to be shot. You know, fun times. Uh, this is interesting here. You had a little schism in the army. You had. What is this? <laughs> you actually have a character in here. Who is, who is this? Now you hear about this in the army more and more, okay? Uh, two little anecdotes. Uh, my uncle was in the Navy. He was on leave in Okinawa and had his, uh, he got mugged and he had his throat cut uh, by Marines, okay? Uh, uh, certain Marines. Anyway, uh, not, you know. So there was already a lot of tension, a lot of uh, in criminality that was uh, being tolerated in the army, in the system run by the government. Now, this is for you too. Uh, my stepfather uh, was a uh, truck driver in Nam. His truck got hit with a mortar. And for eight hours, he was upside down in the cab uh, while uh, the guy next to him was dead uh, with a firefight raging around him. Uh, but he survived. Uh, he was a pretty well-adjusted guy, actually, too. So, anyway, I like this. But look at here, Saigon Warrior. We need a ride, Whitey. How about it? Sure, sure. Always glad to help you guys out. <laughs> Climb in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so it's interesting that this character is being shown to be uh, a negative character. Imagine that. Well, obviously, someone. these memos are not being received. Well, we go here to the next, another guy, captured alive, right? Don Lomax really felt for the, these people. A lot of guys were not accounted for. Uh, anyway, what is this? Alright. Uh, I mean, oh, this is interesting. I actually, I didn't really read the letters column, but anyway. <laughs> the CIA, an arm of the presidency, back then anyway, was in charge of the Vietnam War. And as any vet can tell you, the vexing questions which arose there can only be understood by placing Vietnam in the context of the information above. Alright. Yeah. Alright. National economy was irrevocably wrecked ah, by a handful of men at the top. The U.S. Constitution. People was designed to protect. Yeah. You know, oh, this is a, someone writing. Anyway, but this is what I'm... You had a real good letters column. So what's the point I'm getting at? This is a, 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 a kind of back home issue where, you know, he's having psychological problems. He's having visions. <clears throat> he's having horrible nightmares. Like my grandfather had nightmares all the time from the war he was in. Seeing people that are dead talking to him. Uh, this funny scene here where uh, General Westmoreland shows up for a little photo op. You know, with the old uh, purple heart. And this dude wants to cap him. <laughs> he hits him with the, uh, you know, the bedpan when they were made out of metal. And, you know, he's seeing all the guys from the previous issues who died on the plane with him. You know? I like this thing here, too. Uh, I knew her well. I'd seen her in a hundred bars around the world. She wasn't always female, but she was always a pain in the ass. <laughs> 
The modern woman, right, ladies? Anyway, she does a drink at this dude who's got, you know, one limb left. And we have a little scene here at the end where a mob of unruly uh, low-life people decide they're going to attack a single guy. Right? And do violence. And, and not get in trouble for it. No, but it ends nice because this guy picks himself up, puts him back in the chair, and uh, obviously his uh, wife or his sister comes. Yeah, so it was a nice little, nice little thing here. In 1982, the Air Force changed Earl status to killed in action. Another guy missing. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Department of Justice, our good friends, drew the action and stated in its final decision. Having examined all the available evidence, the commission finds that Earl P. Hopper Jr. survived the crash and was captured. Talk about uh, sticking up for your guys, huh? Yeah. Anyway. And this one here is just kind of funny. Uh, the opening where you see the racial tension <laughs> between the guys. You know. Yeah. Buy up the whole country a few acres and give it to Watts. To watch Coloreds for a whole man. This is what we need, another Alabama. And so the, my man here, you know, uh, gives it back to him. <clears throat> I, I remember growing up, uh, I worked with all kinds of people, and uh, the racial humor was actually more common amongst at least the young guy, us, us young guys. We used to make jokes about each other all the time, and we didn't want to kill each other. Uh, we kill each other. <laughs> it's a one-sided thing, but you get what I'm saying. So, a lot healthier. I guess you need uh, men for that. You know? So basically, he's going back. You know, he has to go back here, and you get to see some of the uh, like the stuff you saw in uh, Apocalypse Now, the gunboats, uh, and the large hospital barges and stuff they had. Uh, they go on a little patrol here. The APCs, the armored coffins, and the old story of uh, you know, right? Them 113s were designed to carry troops. Once they're in the war, they find the AK-47 round. Uh, capacity one arm inside, but not out the other, so it'd rattle around. Okay, uh, the half tracks in uh, North Africa had that issue too. You know, when the bullet would come in, uh, and it would bounce around. Uh, and uh, the Sarge is really cool. He's a uh, don't dangle your legs on the side of the APC, and you're gonna find out why. <laughs> right? This man lost a leg for no reason. So you got an experienced NCO here. I want you to parade your people past this injured man. I want them to see firsthand what could happen. They dangle their body parts over the side. So now you're going to see why you don't do that. It's poor bastard. Uh, and that's just a calm, except ton, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these dudes went through this. Anyhow. Just great, great comic. Okay. And then uh, a <laughs> scene here where he goes with some irregulars and he thinks that they're going to sell him out and kill him. Uh... And he finally, apparently, I owe them an apology. They actually were very trustworthy. <laughs> and he sees how you deal, how the South Vietnamese deal with the North. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> anyway, great comic. And I mentioned that before. Uh, look, comics of the losers. Yeah, the loser was the American man. Uh, you could say the American middle class, working class, man. Because in America, the middle class and the working class are kind of intertwined. It's not like in the UK. Uh, here's another guy. This guy, from what they said, was a tough son of a bitch. Right? Actually escaped. Right? Actually beat some Vietnamese guys to death with the chains they chained him with. A real friggin' guy. He apparently he was uh, able to put up with torture, being shot in the legs. Uh, achieved a legendary status amongst communist interrogators from around the world. Right? East Germans, Cubans, Russians. Uh. <sighs> yeah, the American, the real American man, the European descended, working class, middle class man, uh, whether going to college or whether working in a factory, was the loser of this war and now is to be replaced. And I'm just going to leave this off with here. Uh, the um, his uh, his wife. Since I'm Catholic, I was taught that we were all put on here on Earth by God for a purpose. 
So if Charles is gone, then he has served his purpose here on earth. I'm very worried about the future and the honor of this country. You should be. Rest in peace. Uh, you guys lost, but you're not losers. Later.